What is up guys, this is Jared Spawning here, and today I'm going to be talking about the difference between money and currency. And if you don't, uh, you know, if you don't really know about this too much, I'd recommend reading, um, a, the book. If you're, you know, if you're someone who wants to get into British Mill investing but don't really understand too much, I'll just tell you where I got this from personally. Um, this book, A Guide to Investing in Gold and Silver by Mike Malati, and he explains this very well in there. I'll be explaining it in this video. So, this was, this video is inspired by his book. Just if you guys are wondering where I got this from. But yeah, I want to be talking about just that uh, a little bit difference today. And honestly, if you don't know the difference, then you know, you are really, really way behind. Because this, you know, this changes a lot when you really think about it. So money and currency are very, very different. Money is what you're looking at right here, silver, as well as gold, of course. And just precious metals in general, mainly, you know, mainly referring to silver and gold here. But that's what money is, is precious metals. They always hold their value, you know, no matter where you go, it's always worth something. As opposed to currency, which is paper money or, you know, maybe, I mean, usually today it's paper money as well as, you know, coins and that type of thing. But basically, it's supposed to represent money, you know, and usually the currency is going to start out by being backed by actual money so that you know the thought is that your currency is holds value because there's actual money protecting it however just like the united states here you know most countries do end up turning their currency into a fiat currency which i'm sure you've heard of if you, you know, know a decent amount about economics and if you don't though basically a fiat currency is a currency that's unbacked by silver and gold and therefore, it is only worth, you know, basically the supply and demand value. It's only worth, you know, something because of the fact that there's a limited number of them in circulation. But then, you know, you start to bring up inflation because we will print more dollars to pay off war debts. And then, you know, you start to get into deficit spending, that thing, type of thing, which in the end just brings up inflation and eventually will lead to the fall of many great empires. It's what leads to the... But, Michael Milani basically explained that there's always a great battle going on between silver and gold versus currency. They'll fight, basically it's, you know, they're fighting these currencies that the country set up once they, they're no longer backed by silver and gold. And in the end, what ends up happening is the economy of that country, since it no longer holds real value, will fall. However, silver and gold will still retain their value. They'll replenish their own value revalue themselves, if you will, and they will come out, you know, victorious in that battle. They're always going to win if you pit them against each other because of the fact that silver and gold are universally accepted no matter where you go. You know, you can go to any country, let's use this example here, no matter where you go, this 5-ounce silver bar is a 5-ounce silver bar, but let's say you go to a foreign country and you show them this right here, $20 bill. You think in France this means anything? No, it doesn't, okay? It has no real value to them because U.S. currency is only valuable in the U.S. And it's really only valuable because the government tells us it is. Honestly, you have to really understand, you know, the true reason why currency should be valuable because really you're just taking the government's word for it. They're saying, you know what? This, this $20 bill right here has a buying power of $20. And you should be able to get $20 worth of services for it. But, really, it holds no real value beyond the United States. Any other country, it's valueless because to them it means nothing. And only their own currency means something. But, you bring this 5-ounce bar somewhere, and it's a 5-ounce silver bar still. No matter where you bring it, silver always retains its value. And that's why, you know, I always recommend investing in silver. Because, if, if there's an economic collapse in your country, everything you own... In terms of money, it's going to be valueless. The property you own could also become valueless. Certainly the stocks you own will. Maybe not property, just because of the fact that, I mean, people are going to need areas to live, but it's going to be a lot more, you know, criminal activity going on if there's an economic collapse. And, you know, who says anyone will be doing anything fairly, but, you know, the stocks you have are going to be worth nothing because there's going to be no companies willing to operate in the United States anymore, and the stock market's going to be done. Uh, this right here is going to be worth zero dollars and zero cents because I can tell you right now the um the cotton and I guess I believe it's like the cotton like linen blend that they use for these 
bills, but I can tell you that's not worth twenty dollars, okay? Um but what is gonna be worth something is this all of this right here is gonna be holding real value. So I just wanna make that quick video and I hope you guys enjoyed it, but that's it for this one. Peace, love, much respect.